Hi again, everyone, and welcome to our Final Four Breakdown. I'm Mike Lucas for UWBadgers.com. I'm joined by the voice of the Badgers, Matt LePay. Quite an impressive building, quite an impressive run by this Wisconsin basketball team. Yeah, I think to all the above you say, wow, right, at the run and when you walk into this facility and as big as it is for football, even bigger for bas basketball. Nigel Hayes, I asked him about the first time he came in here, and he says it feels like the court is longer the first time through. The good news is everybody gets three sessions in here before tip-off. That maybe can minimize that adjustment playing in a, in a building as large as this. I'm not an I'm an engineer by any stretch of the imagination, but I'm guessing you could take the RCA dome where the Badgers played in the Final Four 14 years ago and put it inside AT&T Stadium. Yeah, with room to spare. I would think. I mean, it's 100,000 plus for a Cowboys game. They're, I think they're going to listen to what 77,000 for this Final Four. So big, really big. Well, let me ask you, not exactly a key to the game, but Kentucky's played here and lost to Baylor. And Kentucky played dome ball last weekend. Any advantage? I, I would think maybe a little bit, sure. I mean, you're, you're used to the surroundings that go with it. Although I would say, in talking with Greg Gard about this, he says sometimes that can be overdone. And as I said, they'll all have three sessions here. They had a closed practice on Thursday, the open session on Friday. And I think everybody gets a shoot around. So that maybe can allow these guys to get used to the shooting background and just how immense this whole event is. Now, if you're looking at Kentucky in your brackets and you're seeing number eight seed, don't be deceived. This was the number one team in the preseason and has been playing like it over the month of March. Yeah, I think that, you know, there was the preseason assumption given all the McDonald's All-Americans that, that Kentucky has, but they're freshmen. So there was, I think we jumped to conclusions early that they were going to be great right away. Well, they weren't. They lost 10 games in the regular season. Florida was the runaway winner of the SEC regular season, went on to win the, the SEC tournament. But right now, Kentucky is playing like anything but an eight seed. And we probably say this too much, that freshmen are no longer freshmen at this time of the year. Well, they're not playing like freshmen right now. They're playing more like veterans, the starting five and beyond. Yeah, and this is the first time five freshmen have started in that C2A Final Four since the Fab Five goes back a, a little bit. Let's talk about one of those freshmen in particular, Julius Randle. He could be a difference maker. Absolutely. He averages a double-double. 24 double doubles through the course of the season but when you're averaging that that gets your attention and he, he can play like a bulldog he's one of those guys like this team rebounds so well and he's getting you 10 or 11 a game and, and on the offensive class is where Kentucky is particularly effective be it Randall or anybody else their ability to chase down their own misses has been a big key for Kentucky. And the freshman twins in the backcourt have also been instrumental in the run that Kentucky has made late in the season. And you take a look at them, and they're more physical than most guards. Uh, about 6'4 and a half, 6'5, listed at 6'6. Right, but they, they have a little bit of bulk, bulk to them, relatively speaking, and big shot capability, especially Aaron Harrison, the shot that he made against Louisville as well as Michigan. Badgers have their big shot maker in Trey Jackson. Louisville has one right now in Aaron Harris. So or excuse me, Kentucky has one in Aaron Harris. So what's your expectation for Frank Kaminsky? Uh, he's been riding the media wave all week long. Everybody has been talking about Frank the Tank. How's he going to handle it? That's a good question. He'll probably handle it on the floor. He'll enjoy it being on the floor more than the media. He doesn't really care to do that. He does it, and he does it pretty well. It's just not his favorite thing to do. Secrets out, though, if there was one to begin with, and I'm curious to see how Kentucky's going to defend him the good news about this Badger team, though, Mike, and we've seen it all year, they're balanced. And if they're going to focus on Frank, maybe that opens up some opportunities for the other four on the floor. We'll talk a couple, couple keys right now. Wichita State's personnel is different than Wisconsin's. No doubt about that. But Wichita State was able to attack Kentucky in transition. I wonder if the Badgers won't try to attack when warranted. They're capable. That's the one thing when you talk to other people, you want, I mean, I'm always careful on how I say it because this is not you know, a racehorse team, but when the opportunity is there, this Badger team has proven to be good enough to take advantage of it, led by Trey Jackson. Oregon found that out the hard way. Anything you can get that's fairly easy, you jump on it, and I think this Badger team is, I'm not saying it's going to get a ton of transition points, but I think the Badgers have proven to be good enough to get some opportunities. And I know Matt would agree with me on this. Almost anybody here, if you ask him about the most important thing determining this game, this outcome between Kentucky and Wisconsin, could be how the Badgers rebound defensively. They're a good defensive rebounding team. Kentucky is a great offensive yep. rebounding team, so that's what you look for. 
Now, the one thing, Kentucky and the SEC did not shoot the ball particularly well. It's shooting it very well in this NCAA tournament, and it's chasing down, as we said, the missed shots. It's a long team. It has a lot of bounce, but the old line, body on a body. Wisconsin's going to have to do that to get itself in position to have a chance here tonight. You think Kentucky respects Wisconsin, or does it really matter at this point? Uh, I, 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 my guess is they do. You, you better respect everybody now when you get here to the Final Four. Um, but I, I still think there's that touch of an image with Wisconsin that a lot of people have, that it's always a slow, let's beat you 50 to 49. The smart people, maybe the majority who follow basketball know that, but it maybe still is in the back of your mind. It's just still the thick ankled plotting Wisconsin team. The Badgers would love for everybody to think that way. One last thought. We can go back 14 years and a lot of things have changed, too numerous to mention. But the one thing that stood out for me leading up to Wisconsin's appearance here in the Final Four is the fan interest and response. It's been off the charts. It's been terrific, and, and, and the coverage has too. I mean, let's face it, there's been so many positive things written about this program, and justifiably so. Be it the New York Times article, be it the Rick Riley piece, and, you know, national coverage. And the storyline with Bo, you know, Bo, you know, he talks about it's a player's game, and it is, but when you win the regional on a night on a day when your father would have been 90 and everybody knows how close Bo and Butch Ryan were through the years and all their trips to the final four it's been storybook and in one that hopefully has another couple chapters left priceless memories could be created even more that next chapter will be written when Wisconsin takes on Kentucky for the voice of the Badgers I'm Mike Lucas for UWBadgers.com thanks for watching our Badger breakdown from the final four